Welcome all to CE for Civil Engineering classes. So in this video, we'll be seeing about the water cycle or the precipitation cycle also called the hydrologic cycle which comes under the hydrology and irrigation engineering. So to start with, we'll see what a hydrologic cycle means. So we all know that a hydrologic cycle is basically uh, showing a water circulatory cycle. So it shows how the water gets converted from one form to another and the cycling motion of water is being shown. So uh, we know that uh, the in the water cycle evaporations would occur from the surface of oceans, lakes, water bodies etc. And uh, the evaporated water molecules they will condense to form clouds and uh, the fine dust, fine dust particles will act as a condensation nuclei. Now further these clouds will be carried away by the uh, wind motion and uh, and in at suitable places what happens is that these particles they will uh, grow in size and finally they will pour down to the earth in the form of precipitation. The precipitation can be of uh, in the form of uh, rain, snow, uh, hail etc. Now moving on to the components of a hydrologic cycle. There are main uh, seven components in the hydrologic cycle. So the first comes of course the precipitation. Precipitation is the different forms of water that comes to the earth right. Then we have evaporation, runoff, transpiration, infiltration, interception and so called depression storage. So we will see one by one what all these components are about. So precipitation is generally the deposition of water in the form of rain, snow etc. Uh, and evaporation is what the conversion of water from liquid to the gaseous phase. Now into this point I would like to add a point that uh, in case of uh, precipitation the precipitation on the earth surface that is land mass in case of a land mass the precipitation will be greater than the evaporation whereas over the ocean over the oceans you can see that the evaporation rate will be greater than that of the precipitation rate. So from exam viewpoint you have to note these two points that is over the land mass the precipitation rate will be greater than that of the evaporation whereas over the ocean surface the evaporation rate will be greater than that of the precipitation. The next component we saw is the transpiration. So we know that all leaves will be having small pores which are called as stomata, right. So there will be a loss of moisture occurring due to the temperature difference etc. That is evaporation is practically happening through the stomata that is from the plant leaves and that is what you call as the transpiration. And if suppose the evaporation occurring from this plants together with the soil uh, adjacent to it is considered you call it as evapotranspiration. Okay. Now next the important term is infiltration. Infiltration generally refers to the movement of water into the soil. Or you can call it as the first entry of water into the soil or the earth surface. Now whereas the deep entry of water to the soil is what you call as the percolation. So infiltration means it is the initial entry of the water into the soil whereas the deep entry is what you call as the percolation. Next component of the precipitation is runoff. So runoff is which is the po portion which is not evaporated right. So basically they may finally join the streams etc. Now these runoff itself can be of three types. It can be surface, subsurface or groundwater flow type. So in a surface runoff, the water directly flows over land and uh, it reaches the streams finally. Whereas in the case of a subsurface runoff, what happens is that water initially would infiltrate, then they will travel a certain distance horizontally and finally they will join with the surface streams. So that is what, what you call as a subsurface runoff. And final portion of runoff, you can call it as a groundwater flow that is the precipitation after infiltration that is after infiltration it will go deep into the uh, ground 
that is percolation will occur and they will join the ground water table and at suitable portions they may also uh, emerge and become a part of the surface streams. Now next another part is of the precipitation cycle it's a depression storage. So you know that uh, the, there will be some natural depression so whenever the uh, rain etc would occur some amount of water gets stored in these depressions for temporary. Uh, temporarily and after after a while they may uh, get evaporated also so such water which are stored in the depression is what you call as a depression storage so next one is the intercepted uh, storage that is the portion of precipitation which gets intercepted by vegetation that is sometimes what happens is that all the rain falling onto the earth will not reach the earth surface so in between they will be intercepted by some leaves vegetation etc so that water again that will be evaporated back to the earth so it won't be reaching the earth surface such uh, a portion which is intercepted by this vegetation is what you call as the intercepted storage now comes the water budget equation or you can call it as a hydrologic equation it is an equation based of low based on law of conservation of mass so simply you can say that mass inflow minus mass outflow equal to change in storage or the entire mass is conserved or entire precipitation falling onto the earth is conserved. So on a simple note you can say that precipitation is equal to evaporation plus runoff. On, on a detailed note you can write precipitation minus runoff minus evaporation minus transpiration and uh, minus the groundwater flow will all be equal to the change in storage or in other terms the precipitation falling onto the earth is conserved and that will be equal to the sum of runoff evaporation transpiration the groundwater flow plus what is stored in the earth surface hope you enjoyed the classes thank you for watching ce for civil engineering if you like the video please like and subscribe thank you